You know, you have to go through the annals on this arc, you put two that to this. I'm not going to say it, you're glad for that. <coughs> like God told him to, as the song says. Look at verse 22 in the discussion after God wraps up all that's happening here. He told Noah how to build that ark, how big to build it, how it dimensions, what far, what to do with all the animals. And it said, thus... Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Now who wrote that? Book, book of Genesis. Who wrote the book of Genesis? God's inspiration. What man did that? Somebody. Moses. Okay. And Moses came when? In genealogies of time and whatever. Who came first? Noah or Moses? Noah came first. Generations first. You find Noah in chapter 6, you don't find Moses until way over in Exodus. And yet Moses is the one that's writing this. So it's not like Moses is writing this so Noah can read it later on and know that he, God was happy with him. Noah's gone. Generations of people were gone. And yet for some reason, God puts this in here for somebody to read. Who's he talking to? You and me. God says, I want you to see what's going on here. I gave Moses instruction. And for 120 years, he did exactly what I said. Just like I told him. He built that ark exactly how I told him. And I'm going to tell you, in this reference here, in other words, that that's how I want you to listen to me. And so as we're thinking about God's word and what it's doing, it has right answers, and it is a must for our life, for our salvation, to keep us in line, to keep us from messing up our marriages, to help us to raise our kids right, to get relations straightened out when we go wrong or awry with one another, to make sure that we are what we ought to be, that the rest of the world looks at us and goes, there's a light, there's a breath of fresh air, that person's the salt of the earth. Not all that. What we do glorifies God. And that's what we're here for. And to get to heaven, of course. Right answers from God's Word. What a novel idea. How important it is for us to be studying it, learning it, continually digging in it. There's something new every day that you can find there. You just sit down and read it. So amazing, God's Word. Written for our encouragement, our admonition, our correction, to get us to heaven, to remind us what we're to do in every way in all of our relationships. How do you treat God's Word? The amen, yeah, but okay, look at your life now because that's really what this book's about. It's not just the learning of it. That's the application. People were talking some time ago about different translations and whatever. One fellow says, I like my mom's translation the best and her mom's translation. Says, yeah, she keeps translating me into her life. She says, it makes a difference. It does. It can make a difference for you. Are you living by it? Are you a Christian? The way God describes it. Would you like to become a Christian today? Being buried with Christ in baptism. Would you like to get your life right with God? If it's not rightly dividing in your heart the way it's going. <coughs> Encourage you, admonish you, and beg you to do what it says. And we stand together as a group of people that are struggling, not always getting it right, reminding ourselves, this is what we're about. Appreciate what Chris Willis said, stepped up and said, I believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that God sent His Son to die for us. And there's a purpose in that. Because we all have sin. We all need to take care of that. And the problem with sin to be taken care of only with the blood of Jesus Christ. Power 
of salvation for our souls. If your heart's not right, your life's not right, then come and stand.